Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you're joining us from. My name is Chad Lacey. I'm a global sales strategist with AWS, and I'm joined with my good friend, Shar Narashiman from NVIDIA. Shar, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Glad to be here. So NVIDIA, it's a name that all of us in the tech industry and a lot of PC gamers have known forever. You guys have been around since 1993. You really started in uh, innovating in GPUs, especially for PC gaming around 1999. I'm personally running uh, GTX 3080 right now, hoping to get my hands on a 4090 soon. Uh, but give us a little bit of an idea uh, uh, about what what NVIDIA has been doing in the in the data center space with GPUs. Uh, sure, we've really been focusing on uh, making compute available for for our users, allowing them to process these uh, revolutionary new AI and high performance computing HPC models that we uh, are seeing uh, get a lot of adoption in enterprise these days. Uh, we're focused on working with our partners like AWS, and thank you for that relationship, uh, to really make that uh, compute and those capabilities uh, accessible to every enterprise. Awesome. So tell me about some of the trends that you're seeing in, in the data centers when it comes to energy usage. Uh, sure. So, you know, chat GPT was really a iPhone moment for generative AI. And it's, it's the app that uh, reached 100 million users faster than has ever been done before in history, even faster than WhatsApp, Instagram, or, or TikTok. Wow. So it, it really has a huge uh, user base and that's come on very quickly. And what it's really been able to demonstrate is it's been able to show every enterprise how they can actually add uh, generative AI solutions into their daily business workflows. And so we're seeing an incredible increase in demand. Uh, and um, But that's the part of these models like ChatGPT, they require billions and billions of, of petaflops to train them. So you have kind of like these, these competing factors where you've got enormous demand coming, coming uh, and you've also got a lot of compute that's required. And so that's having this tendency of it's putting some pressure on data centers because they're going to have to make more and more compute available to all of these enterprises. Now, uh, currently, you know, when we look at how this works in terms of energy, uh, data centers consume about 2% of the world's uh, energy supply. And that number is forecast to more than triple by 2030. So uh, it's, it's really an unsustainable pace because the, the rate of demand of electricity that's being required by data centers, it's growing much faster than new generation capacity is coming online. And so the, the bottom line is to support Gen AI, um, we have to make data centers much more energy efficient. No, it totally makes sense. And, you know, I'm sure you're aware AWS is on path to be carbon neutral by 2025. And we're doing that in conjunction with NVIDIA. So we appreciate your, your help in doing that. But help me understand what's the difference between sustainability and energy efficiency? Sure. S sustainability is a set of business practices that is really focused on uh, making or your, your enterprise more carbon efficient or more carbon neutral. It's a, it's a holistic set of processes that you do throughout the life cycle of your product and how you minimize your impact on the environment. So when we look at our own business, you know, we think about from a manufacturing standpoint, how can we use recycled materials, for example? How can we use renewable energy uh, in our manufacturing processes? And that extends all the way to when our products are out in the field working with users. Um, how do they minimize the amount of energy that they use uh, in, 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 while they're actually in use? And so that's a very holistic end-to-end -end, uh, way of looking at how do we minimize our, our carbon footprint on, on, on the planet. Energy efficiency is a, a subset of those things. And it's specifically talk, focused on taking a product and minimizing the amount of energy that it's using to complete a specific task or workload. So the, the easiest way to think about it when we're talking about servers is, you know, how much wall power are we measuring as the server is actually completing a, a workload? No, it totally makes sense. And, and in that same realm, so generative AI is a topic that is getting a lot of buzz today. AWS made some announcements earlier 
uh, where we're getting in, in the space. But can generative AI like chat GPT uh, be thought of as sustainable? Don't they consume a lot of energy? So it's true that these models do consume a lot of energy. They do require very large compute clusters uh, to be able to, to handle uh, these workloads. But we have to look at it from a perspective of what is the value that they're adding to a to an enterprise or to a business? Um, Gen AI solutions can really grow your your business, your roadmap, add new opportunities for your customers. If, for example, you're a customer service organization and you have customer service reps, well, you could implement a AI chatbot that could handle a lot of entry level queries and free up your staff to focus on those very complex set of queries that your customers may have. And by doing that, you could increase your customer base by several orders of magnitude. So now you're growing your business uh, revenues and profitability in a way that would have been a lot more expensive, uh, both financially as well as carbon wise, uh, if you were to do it using traditional means of growing your enterprise. So. These uh, Gen AI solutions can, can really pay for themselves because they can very efficiently bring about uh, new business opportunities. And I should point out that Gen AI comes in, in many shapes and sizes. You've got ChatGPT, which is kind of on the larger end of the scale, uh, LLMs or large language models as we call them, but they scale down to the small end of the scale, what we call stable diffusion, um, which is an art generation uh, AI model that can run on a single GPU. But regardless of the size of the model that you're dealing with, the most important thing is how do we make it run as efficiently as possible uh, when you're handling the compute? And uh, that's where NVIDIA GPUs running on AWS uh, are, are a great way to bring these offerings to our partners. So I, I know a lot of the people watching this uh, are, are probably taking a look at generative AI, uh, you know, starting to, to figure out some of the use cases within their own businesses. What's a layperson example of, of uh, business adopting generative AI? So, um, you know, virtually every human process can in some way, shape or form uh, be implemented with uh, a gen AI solution. So, you know, uh, one that I really like to quote is, is imagine you're a software maker that makes PDF software. Your, your, um, your customer base are predominantly people editing and uh, creating text documents. You could add stable diffusion, which is a model that allows you to use a number of text prompts. Just, you know, write a few, write a sentence and ask it to generate an image on the fly for you. <laughs> and just in a couple of seconds, you could have realistic, you know, beautiful images that can really enrich your PDF document. So, you know, this turns into a win-win because the customer suddenly gets a much richer experience. They're, they're creating these beautiful uh, assets with, with rich, engaging content. And the PDF maker gets a brand new opportunity to upsell value to their customers. And, um, you know, if they made this a, a subscription-based service, then uh, suddenly they've unlocked a brand new revenue stream for their customers. So, Shar, I love that example. So taking this PDF software company, how can they make the most uh, with AWS and NVIDIA to meet their uh, carbon neutral, carbon zero goals? So... Anytime we add a new user feature like this, we see a surge in demand as everyone rushes to use it, just, just like what, what happened with ChatGPT. So this PDF software maker, you know, their, their expertise is, is in line of creating and distributing software. And building data centers isn't necessarily their forte. And that's why AWS is the perfect partner. Um, without that costly uh, CapEx spend of building a data center and uh, setting up all their own servers, they can come to AWS and uh, dynamically scale up and down as uh, as demand appears for their for their user base. So AWS is a is a great way for these customers to to get online, and um, the uh, the PDF software maker is going to need uh, different types of compute. They're going to have to do what we call AI training, which is where you're teaching the model and refining its output over time to give better images. 
Uh, and they're also going to have to do what we call AI inference, which is where you take that model and you deploy it into production. A AWS has wonderful instances that are fully optimized for all of these different types of use cases. And um, you can really, by choosing NVIDIA GPUs on AWS, you can really reduce uh, your impact on the environment. For example, if I were to, if I were the PDF maker and I was running uh, uh, BERT, which is a natural language processing model to uh, understand what your query is actually asking. And if I were to run that on AWS US East uh, reserved instances, then if I were to use NVIDIA GPUs instead of CPUs, uh, I would save 16 times as much uh, from an expenditure standpoint. So it's a lot cheaper and I would have 1 20th of the carbon footprint as I, as I do that. And these benefits, you know, they uh, extend even further as you go to the really large language models. The H100 uh, GPU from NVIDIA with the Hopper, Hopper architecture, that has what we call a transformer engine that's optimized for some of these LLM models. And in those models, we're 300 times more energy efficient than CPUs at the same wow. time. So the combination of uh, NVIDIA GPUs on AWS instances is a, is, a, is a great way for customers to scale up demand and do it in a very energy efficient manner on their, on their supply chain. Okay, so you touched on something there for a second that I want to double click on, uh, because when I first started talking about machine learning and, and artificial intelligent workloads with some of my non-tech friends, um, and specifically talking about GPUs, they were like, don't you mean CPUs? And I'm like, no, I'm talking about GPUs. Um, so what's the difference between a CPU and GPU in terms of cost efficiency? or energy efficiency rather. So so a, a CPU we like to think of, you know, as a Swiss army army knife. It it can do a lot of different workloads um, but with generally modest performance. GPUs on the other hand, they're they're really optimized for uh, a, a few specific workloads like AI, uh, HPC, um, these tasks where you have a lot of massive matrix matrix multiply. Um, that high level of compute, that's where GPUs excel, uh, particularly in the tensor core that we have provided uh, in, in our GPUs. And uh, if you implement uh, GPUs for handling AI and HPC workloads, you'll actually find that they're typically 20 times more energy efficient than CPU counterparts. And um, that's the equivalent. If, if the whole world took uh, AI, HPC, and data analytics workloads. And they migrated them, all the workloads that are currently running on CPU servers and data centers today, and they migrated them over to GPUs. The world would save 20 terawatt hours of electricity wow. in a single year. Uh, that's the equivalent of 1.9 million US homes. Uh, and it's roughly just under 10% of global data center energy usage. So. This combination of using GPUs on AWS, it can really help make every business very sustainable, uh, help them accomplish their, their carbon neutral goals as well. That's fantastic, Shar. Thanks for, but I, I'm, I got to clarify one thing. Don't CPUs operate at a much lower TDP than a GPU? Uh, you know, so TDP is, is known as thermal design uh, power and it's the 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 peak operating power of a processor. Typically, how much power would you draw if you were running at at a max throughput? Um, it's true that CPUs have a lower TDP, but they take orders of magnitude longer to handle or complete the exact same workload or task. So by running for that much longer, they end up burning a lot more energy in aggregate. Um, GPUs are, uh, have very high throughput. They complete the task very quickly, and then they go back into a low-power idle state where they're not consuming much energy at all. And so in aggregate for these AI, HPC, data analytics workloads that we've analyzed, we found that there's huge savings when it comes to energy. The, the easiest analogy that I, I like to use in, in this uh, instance is, you know, if you're moving your home and you're getting a moving truck to move your stuff, um, it's much cheaper, much quicker, way more efficient to just get a moving truck and make that trip one time. Uh, if you were to get a whole bunch of cars and, you know, you might spend days uh, moving all your stuff and your furniture and 
you'd take a lot longer and cost you a lot more and you'd burn a lot more energy in the process. So GPUs by nature do do these workloads very, very well. Having just moved in the last year, I understand that analogy all too well. <laughs> <laughs> so how does NVIDIA think holistically about energy efficiency uh, through hardware and software? So we're making optimizations throughout the entire data center stack, uh, both at the hardware level as well as the software level to really accelerate and make these workloads more energy efficient. So these neural networks, for example, we, we typically think of them as, as a graph that has many, many layers, hundreds, sometimes thousands. And what we do is we, we, we perform optimizations like kernel effusion, where you're merging different uh, kernels in, in, in the graph together so that you're minimizing the number of data fetches, uh, the amount of information that's exchanged back and forth. And that has a tendency to reduce the amount of energy that's consumed. The transformer engine that I mentioned earlier in NVIDIA H100 Hopper architecture GPUs, um, that is really optimized to uh, scan a neural network graph, identify uh, parts of the graph that can move into lower precision data formats. Um, those are more memory efficient and thus reduce memory and bandwidth pressure. So that's another way where we're also bringing about some energy efficiencies. Now, if we step outside of uh, the, uh, the GPU itself, when we look in the networking, uh, NVIDIA has a number of networking products like our smart NICs. Um, they have a, a, we have a, a capability called Sharp and that performs some AI functions like all reduce, uh, which is commonly used in neural network uh, training. And um, uh, that allows us to avoid having to feed data in and out of uh, the GPU too frequently by handling some of these basic functions within the network itself. Now, if you look inside a server node, we provide our NVLink interconnect capability, and that can allow you to make data transfers at up to 900 gigabytes per wow. second. So it's, and we provide software optimized libraries that allow you to load balance across all of the different GPUs inside the node so that there's no GPU that's waiting for another task to complete from a different GPU. And so we really uh, allow you to maximize utilization and that makes the entire process very efficient. Lastly, we've also introduced a CPU or announced a CPU, our gray CPU, and uh, that has a high speed uh, interconnect with direct memory access between the CPU, uh, gray CPU and our, and our hopper GPUs. So that also makes data transfer and energy tra uh, minimizes the amount of energy that's used. So, you know, looking at the entire stack, hardware, software, uh, optimizations that our customers will use, um, uh, containers for their AI containers uh, that they might uh, need to access, um, all of those optimizations are, are being made so that you can really realize energy efficiencies throughout the process. Okay, that's super cool. Um, so talk to me about what um, existing data centers in general can do to become more energy efficient. So, you know, data centers do take a long time to, to build and stand up and even upgrading the infrastructure within them, that, that can be a, a difficult and expensive process. It's, you know, for example, uh, if you need to bring more power into a data center because suddenly you need a lot more compute, um, it's not always practical or even feasible to run new high transmission power lines into that particular data center. So uh, data centers really have to become more efficient as they see the surge of demand for Gen AI and all the, these different types of compute workloads coming. Uh, you know, the, the easy analogy I like to use is it's a, it's a lot easier to cut your personal spending than it is to grow your paycheck, right? <laughs> so data centers just have to become more efficient with, with what they have. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to swap out CPU servers for GPU servers. And they'll instantly start to realize some of these energy efficiency benefits. Um, even when you look at the CPU, the gray CPU that NVIDIA is, is uh, building, that's twice as energy efficient as a, as a x86 counterpart in a power constrained data center. So you can, just by swapping out the servers themselves, a data center can instantly become far more energy efficient and use much more uh, or, or make more use of what they've uh, already got in terms of power. And, you know, these, these benefits roll through to AWS and these benefits can be realized very quickly. 
Um, if you look in some markets where electricity costs are very high, like Western Europe, for example, uh, installing a GPU server just by the electricity savings alone can pay for itself on AI workloads in just eight months. Wow! So you can realize these savings really quickly and you know, pass the, those savings on to, to your customers as well. Yeah, no, that's great. Okay, so last question for you, Shar. What do you tell AWS customers um, who can't use all the power of their H100 GPU? Well, uh, we do have we do have a feature called multi instance GPU or, or MIG, um, and that allows you to uh, securely partition a GPU in, uh, into up to seven smaller GPU instances. And uh, that guarantees quality of service. It's a it's a function that's built into the hardware itself, um, and that lets you rent out much smaller instances that can be dedicated to individual customers. Guarantee quality of service, and you can just really optimize and right size the amount of GPU compute that you need. Well, that's awesome, Ishar. I just can't thank you enough for joining us here on Earth Day and sharing all this information about how customers can be more energy efficient and work towards getting their carbon uh, zero goals. It's been a thrill having you and sharing all your information. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Chad. Really appreciate the opportunity uh, to to be here today, and thank you again to AWS. And before we let everybody go, we do want to remind you that. Um, uh, NVIDIA has a deep dive on NVIDIA's physics ML framework modulus, which I believe somebody's going to put a link in the chat while we're talking. And if you want to know more information about uh, some of the NVIDIA technologies on AWS, you can go to aws.amazon.com slash NVIDIA. We really appreciate you all joining us here on Earth Day and have a great Earth Day. Thank you so much. Happy Earth Day.